Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Law and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the research that we do in my group. So to begin with, here's a photo of the students currently in my research group. And I should point out that right now we are at the University of Delaware. We will be moving to Penn State next year and I am looking to hire one to two students to work in my research group when we move to Penn State. Broadly speaking, a research group is interested in a variety of materials, including traditional 3-5 semiconductors, as well as 2D materials and heterostructures, primarily for applications in optoelectronics and quantum science. So the overall research goal of my group is to understand and synthesize quantum materials and heterostructures to realize devices with novel designer optical and quantum science properties. So we do this by growing new materials and new material structures with exotic properties using molecular beam epitaxy. After growth, the students characterize the materials and structures using a variety of techniques like X-ray diffraction, atomic force microscopy, and scanning electron microscopy, as well as Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy to extract the optical properties of our materials. And some films are patterned into device structures using nanofabrication. So primarily, we are a molecular beam epitaxy group, also called MBE. So what MBE allows us to do is to grow thin crystalline films, approximately 10 nanometers to 10 microns, literally one layer of atoms at a time. So you can think of this like atomic scale 3D printing. This allows us to control the thickness of each layer as well as the composition of each layer and to have very sharp interfaces between materials in a more complex material stack, as you can see in the transmission electron microscopy images on the right hand side. I would just like to point out for those of you interested in careers in industry that MBE is used in industry pretty widely to create real devices like lasers, solar cells, computer chips, and cell phone communications chips. So how does MBE work? The schematic of the chamber is shown on the right. And basically what we do is we evaporate materials from cells. So we heat these materials up, they evaporate. The MBE system has an extremely low pressure. So the atoms move in molecular beams to the substrate. Substrate is hot, so the atoms can move around and find a low free energy position, as shown in the schematic in the bottom right. The atoms bond to each other to make one atomic layer on the substrate. And this new layer has an epitaxial or crystalline relationship to the substrate. Here you can see a couple of photos of the MBE lab at Penn State. And on the bottom is a link to a virtual tour of the MBE lab if you're interested in looking at it. So what can we do with MBE? We can grow thin films of a variety of materials. Again, my group is primarily interested in semiconductors, like three arsenide and three antimonide materials, as well as van der Waals calcogenide materials. Again, primarily selenides and tellurides. We can grow layered heterostructures. We do this because we may be interested in proximity effects between two different materials, coupling of excitations, band gap engineering, and to create optoelectronic or transport devices. And finally, we actually do quite a bit of growth of nanoscale materials, including quantum wells and quantum dots to understand how quantum confinement impacts our materials. So as I said, I'm currently looking for a couple of students. One project that I have for a student is looking at dope semiconductors for the infrared. So in this particular case, we want to create quite complicated uh, semiconductor material stacks, roll them up into microtubes as shown in the image on the right, and then use these microtubes to actually do sub-wavelength imaging. So we can image structures below the diffraction limit of light. This can have quite a lot of applications in biomedical imaging, as well as in other fields. And as I mentioned before, we're also interested in van der Waals materials. So these are materials that have layered structures with van der Waals bonding between the layers. You can stack different materials with less stringent requirements on lattice constant. And of course, these materials have applications in a variety of areas. So I currently have projects looking at topological 2D materials, as well as 2D materials for terahertz applications. And so in particular, the topological materials we're interested in are topological van der Waals materials. So a topological material is a material that has a topologically non-trivial band structure. And of course, I don't have time to explain this right now, but fundamentally, what that means is these materials can show a huge range of new physics. They have applications in low loss interconnects, in non reciprocal transport, and in terahertz optoelectronics. And so I have projects in MBE growth of Dirac and Whale semimetals, as well as projects in transport of topological van der Waals materials. So please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.